this is episode four of Women in the Workplace. Um, so we're joined by Kat Parsons today. So Kat, do you want to just introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Kat Parsons. I'm Head of Diversity, Inclusion and Belonging for ISS UK and Ireland. Can you just tell us a bit about your journey within the FM industry, sort of how you got into it and how you've become to where you are now? Absolutely, yeah. So I've been in the FM industry for, for th- almost three years now. Um, it's not my background at all. My background is in environmental consultancy, oil and gas, construction, so very male dominated background um, to the point that I think in terms of the sort of diversity work that I do in previous work situations, I potentially wouldn't have been my authentic self. I wouldn't have brought my, my you know, my, my full me to, to work. Yeah. Um, so I'd walk into meetings, obviously very male dominated meetings, um, and I'd be the only woman in the room naturally. So for, so for 16 years of my career, it, I actually became blind to it. And yeah. when I was looking at what I wanted to do next in terms of career steps, I decided that instead of trying to sort of squash myself into a room to make sure that I fitted with my surroundings, actually, I maybe want to do something a bit different so I could actually be my authentic self and uh, yeah, and, and bring that, that full package to work. So. So yeah, so I moved out of that sort of construction, oil and gas background, moved across into FM, and uh, this is where I find myself now. Your involvement with the DNI at ISS? Yeah, so I head up our diversity, inclusion, and belonging team. Uh, it's actually a new position for ISS. We've not had um, this sort of this position before, so we created it this year, mostly because there was so much work that was happening within the business um, around that DNI piece. Uh, we have a new global manager, Margot Slattery, who is phenomenal. So to keep up with her demands and her direction, we decided we'd, we'd put someone else in position in all the countries for ISS around the world. And that allows us to have that, that network. So what's working in one country we can share with other countries, for example. So we've done a big piece of work around the menopause, for example. That's yeah. been going on for sort of 12, 12 months now. Um, and actually now that's it's come to a point where it's working so well, we can feel that it's, you can feel it in the office, you can feel it on sites, everyone's, you know, it's not a taboo subject that's being spoken about. And that's now being replicated globally as well, which is fantastic. What other countries are you, do you, are you seeing a lot of this in? There's a lot of work happening in Denmark at the minute. They also have a, a similar position that's just been filled as well. So there's some great work happening over there. Um, I'm on frequent calls with Australia and New Zealand at very early oh, hours wow. of the morning for, for them. <laughs> it goes late into the evening to catch the Americas as well. So yeah, yeah a lot of sharing around gender balance, for example. Um, and again, it's it's nice because it allows um, so me to share sort of my background yeah. um, and the fact that FM is the most diverse industry I've ever worked in, you know, again, coming from that background of, of, you know, a lot of middle aged men really in management positions. And yeah, there was more women coming in as, you know, sort of engineers and in sort of certain areas of the business. But actually, for me coming into here, it was like, my goodness, I didn't realise you could have so much diversity in in one workplace. So and now that's opened up globally for me as well. So again, I speak to people on a daily basis from from other time zones, which is great. Does it differ a lot in different countries, do you find or? from yeah. how things are in the UK. Certain um, messages I think land a lot easier here than they do in other countries. So menopause, um, I think it's taken a bit longer to get uh, under the skin of things in um, America, for example. Right. Um, but then again, there's other things that, that work really well over there that maybe haven't landed so well here. So again, it's making, I think it's discussed. And again, I've been banging on about the menopause so much that <laughs> I've probably had enough of it now. So, uh, so it allows us again to take sort of subjects that they've sort of classified as sort of a bit more taboo. So the, our next ones, we're going to be looking at male suicide, prostate cancer, okay, menstrual yeah. cycles, and again, they can cause havoc as well. So yeah, so it's, it's bringing those topics to life, really. How do you think that um, DE and I has evolved within the FM and FM industry since you've sort of been involved in, well, been involved in what you've been doing? Yeah, massively, I think. Um, I mean, as ISS, we've always had employee resource groups um, either sort of smaller groups within the UK and Ireland, or we've had global ones that we we obviously network with as well. But even in the short time that I've been in my role, which obviously was was the beginning of this year, being able to sort of put a bit of a structure around these sort of groups of, of people, these these ERGs, just giving them that little bit of structure, and now a budget as well as of, of next year as well. Yeah. The work that comes out of them is absolutely phenomenal. You know, these people are passionate in their you know in their in their little bubbles. 
And yes. my role is to sort of take all those people, make sure they're all in the right boxes, and then, you know, right, what do you want to, you know, what, what do you want to look at? What what's not working in the business? It's taking their voices. So at the minute we're doing a big thing around our maternity paternity policy. Yeah. It's going to be a parental leave policy. Um, so something again from my uh, background. I have two children, but I didn't carry our two children. I'm, I'm gay, yeah. so I have a, a wonderful yeah. wife. But I had to use previously a, a paternity policy that referenced to father, dad. You know, that's not me. I'm, you know, yeah. I'm, I'm mum cat. That's who I am to my kids at home. So for us, again, it was making sure that we're taking that learning from everyone in the business. And we're making sure that, again, our policies are inclusive. So they all say people and placemakers. We call our employees placemakers so that you know, we're, all, we're all the same. We're all part of the team. Making sure we are making sure that everyone is included. So things at the minute we're looking at again as part of that parental policy is things like um, discussing breastfeeding. Well, actually, is the right terminology chest feeding instead? Because again, in terms of trans people, they don't identify as having breasts; they have chest. So again, it's making sure yeah. that every day is a learning day for me. And again, as we're sort of taking these projects on, it's not looking at it from you know one focus point. We're making sure that we we're discussing with all of our ERGs to make sure that we're looking at it from a gender point of view, a pride point of view, an abilities point of view, a culture point of view, a generation's point of view. So we're getting that that whole, you know, we're fixing the entire issue. We're not just blinking. What led you to be so like passionate about this topic and to really get involved and get digging with the companies and getting the point across and making it so yeah. inclusive? That's a really good question. I think this has always been uh, been, been in me, and I think, yeah. as I said, from in terms of my sort of background, I do feel like I did squash myself quite a lot. Um, I had to work very hard to get to a senior position in in consultancy, and yeah. that did take you know quite a few people advocating me, to, you know, to get me up into that position where you know I had a voice there, I could make some change, but I still didn't feel like I was making as much change as I could, and I think I got quite frustrated as part of that industry as well. Um, so I learned an absolute so much from being in that in that background from project management um budgets you know how to sort of that that business side of things and i think yeah. in terms of how that's led me to how i am now i think that's brilliant i'm not just one of those people that talks it if it's said then it's going to be recorded it's going to be project managed and yeah. it's going to be delivered and there'll be a time frame so i don't just let everything slide which is great but i think now that i've moved across um, I had sort of a sidestep into health and safety, a bit more focused on that. And I realised that actually from that health and safety side, it was more around the people. And that's yeah. the bit that I was like, I can I can make change for those people. So if something's not safe or their PPE didn't fit, I can I can do that. I can go back to the business and say, right, this isn't right. And now, like it or not, there's, there's a very big, big voice that again is leading this, this diversity inclusion strategy. And what's really nice is from the moment I took the role, I was told that you're pushing on an open door and I nothing that I've suggested has been turned down they are you know the business is so receptive and if anything you know I've made a strategy for next year in terms of the, something that I thought was you know pretty aspirational we'll, we'll see how we go and I was challenged we need to go bigger than that yeah. so as so I was like fantastic right there you go you can have, you can have even more <laughs> how do you think that the industry well the FM industry in particular has improved over the past few years I think um, there's a lot of like, around collaboration again from my background we would never talk to competitors we you know it was very much yeah. you know keep, keeping within the business and don't have a look you know just again it's that it's that competitive bit but again now I speak to you know everyone you know within the FM industry on some level or another I'm speaking to clients all the time so there is that sort of it's, it's how we're making things better for our people so you know you can't really be you know closed about that if, if someone's yeah. working in one business then we should be shouting about it so that it can be replicated you know with our own touch you know with our iss badge on it but it's yeah it's, it's it's testing things and sharing that knowledge so that again everyone's got the same goal you know our slogan is people make places well absolutely you know and we need to make sure that our people are looked after as do everyone else so i think there's a very big focus on that as well from a generational point of view as well i don't think people you know my mum and dad both worked in you know their entire careers in one business yeah that's not the same anymore and we're being pushed a lot more now from gen z for example you know they want more from their workplace they don't want to just come into work put the bag down do a day's worth of work and then you know thanks very much you know, they want more they're, they're craving that that training that inclusivity that sense of belonging the social side, the career progression so you know, we keep up with that to be able to get the talent in the business and keep it there so that people feel like that they can progress within ISS. So, so I know obviously you'd said earlier about how 
when you first got into the industry, it was very male dominated and things. What do you think can be done to encourage more women to get into FM? I mean, it's probably very different now to what it was when you first got into the industry. But I personally think working in real recruiting within FM is still very male dominated. Um, mm -hmm. So, I mean, what do you think we can do to encourage more women to join the sector? Yeah, I think there's quite a lot we can do. And again, when I sort of look at our, you know, we're, we're really good as a business. If you look at our stats, it's 57% women. You know, that's brilliant for a, for a business of over 30,000 people. But actually, when you drill into it, where are those people sat within the business? And actually, are they sat in engineering? Are they sat in security? Are they sat in these sort of stereotypical male areas of the business? And that is actually where we are we're lacking. So we are focusing on that at the minute. We've got a big project around getting women into engineering. We've got a massive apprenticeship project. Uh, we're starting to look at to go into schools so that we um, we tap into, you know, kids that are going, you know, they, they're going through their education. Yeah. But showcasing that actually, you know, you, you can get through school and you know come out with, you know, some you know GCSEs, that's fine. But if you're not academically gifted, then that's absolutely fine. There's a space for you in FM. You know, and equally yeah. if you want to go up to get a PhD, which is something I could never get. <laughs> you know, equally, there is a there's a space for you within FM as well. So it's very much, um, I think, for us being honest about, yes, our stats look great, but we need to make sure that we are doing that succession planning and we're making sure that women are getting into positions of seniority. So we've got, a, again, there's a bit of a, a plan that there's a pool of those sort of high potential people in the business. And then as people move around, they change areas of the business, which happens quite a lot, or they leave. Then we've got that. That those high potential people yeah. that just slot straight in um, so they have that career development. So I mean getting women into the more senior and the leadership positions do you think that would come from sort of getting them into the roles at more entry level and then people working up because I think I found sometimes we've we do find that some women might not want to go for certain jobs if they think they're just going to be on a, a board of men or yeah. if they've we've had candidates that ask who the um so when they're interviewing like who who else is going up and i think ian on our last episode said that yeah. he had a friend that actually pulled out of going for a promotion because she knew she was going up against some guys that were the well, males that were the doing the same job and he was saying how he'd said to her no you you need to still go and really push her to do it so what's your sorts of thought what's your thoughts on that yeah i think we're quite lucky so in terms of our sort of our leadership team it is exactly 50 50. we have yeah four men four women as, as part of that board so for me now looking you know up across the business you know that's achievable now you know it's not just you know a, a boardroom full of full of men there are women in this business who are absolutely making phenomenal changes and you know just to hear them speak just to see them wander around the office you know that's you know, for everyone, you know, not just women being inspired to take those positions on as well, but also men as well to say that, you know, have a look around their own teams and say, actually, there's some key talent in this team and they need to be, you know, pushed or encouraged or mentored or sponsored so that they are then achieving the best that they can. And I think there's a little bit about that sort of historic bit that if something's working, if someone's working really well in one area of the business, just leave them to it. You know, that's working really well. It, it means I don't have to look at it too much absolutely not the way we're looking at things now if something's working really well in the, in the business then it, right take that person and go and make them you know put them somewhere else so that, that 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 magic then happens somewhere else so again you've got someone stepping in to you know it's nice safe area now that's been fixed move that person on so to so take that skill set and i think again like you say you know women not going for roles because they know that that men are going for them you know absolutely should not be happening you know women needs to be you know stepping up you know, taking yeah. these roles because they're they're achievable for us to do, and that's nice that we can see that in our business. So, what do you think that the employers can do to encourage the D and I as well as sort of women into leadership roles and just women into the sector, really? Yeah, I think there's uh, there's quite a lot of, again in terms of our employee resource groups. You know, that's a nice platform for people to sort of. Put their, their toe in the water, I think, a little bit, just to start to hear what the conversations are and what the changes that we're trying to get yeah. in the business to have their own voice. And then actually, there's there's a lot of potential that we've seen in those groups. So again, it's nice that if you get them into into those resource groups, get them in positions where they're looking after budgets or events or marketing or membership, for example, they then have that exposure to more senior people in the business because we have links with our country leadership team and our SLT as well. 
So, you know, they'll be presenting those people, you know, on a monthly basis to say, this is the voice from our ERG, this is the change that we want to make, so what's doing this. Yeah. So again, from that sort of sponsorship side, all of a sudden you're very visible to some senior people in the business. So again, that the, the ERG is open to absolutely everyone from management all the way across the business, to, you know, our, our frontline staff, you know, security cleaners, whoever it is, they, they have that space and they're given that time to join those those groups so they can have their voice. So that's where that's where I'm looking at the minute is coming through those networks, who's got those voices that we need to be um yeah, putting a microphone to and, yeah. and learning from. So what do you see sort of happening in the future in in the industry? I think there's gonna be a massive amount of change in the next couple of years. At an event I was at yesterday, I was with a lot of diversity inclusion leaders. And yeah. a lot of them were also quite new in their roles as well. Some had been on board, you know, for a couple of years, but there was a lot of new people. And I think businesses have suddenly realised that actually diversity inclusion is not something that you just fall on and, you know, it's off the side of someone's desk within HR. This is something that needs to be Because not only from, you know, looking after your people in your workforce, but it makes good business sense because if people feel they belong and they include within the business, you know, their mental health is going to be better. Yeah. Their job aspirations will be better, they're going to be committed to your business because they know that their voice is being heard. And there was a big focus yesterday at a talk I was on around that mental health. And if you're not looking after the mental health of your employees, for example, again, are they going to be safe to come into work and say, look, I am really struggling. I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with my workload. I'm struggling with my personal life. If we can't provide that support to them, they're not going to be achieving what they need to achieve to their full full potential. So it, it is very much that empathy piece that, that's very much what's coming out of the industry is that it's not about sympathy, it's about empathy. It's about knowing that everyone is very different as a person, very diverse. And again, that things are going to challenge them throughout their working career from, you know, having kids, you know, and, and the, you know, the constant having to sort out schools and everything else. And then actually, you know, towards, you know, later life as well, where you become a carer as well, potentially for, for relatives too. So there is that flexibility as well yeah. but again people can you know they can still have a career they don't suddenly just leave the you know leave the industry the business because you know yeah. think their social their, their personal life has changed so yeah